Okay, well, now we move on to our next session. The unpaid internship has long been part of the fashion and design industries. And my friend Aaron Christian, whom I met outside the men's shows back in the days when we all gathered for physical fashion weeks, he shared a moving short film with me last year. And it shed a light on how one of the key entry points for new talent in fashion is just not an option for some people. The internship is a film about race, class, and privilege within the creative industries. It follows Josh, a young design graduate working in a dead-end job, and Josh has a chance meeting with his idol, a famous magazine editor, who offers him a prestigious but unpaid internship. But for Josh's family, the idea of unpaid work is in incompatible with the everyday financial reality they live with. Please take a look. The only thing that changes our life long term is when we raise our standards. We don't get what we want, we get what we need, what we have to have. Everyone's got lions as their profile picture, everyone's a beast, everyone's on beast mode. But the ones who are hunting down that vital content, the ones in the gym, the ones who are sweating, the ones who are making it happen, they don't have time to be Googling lion pictures. They're out there, they're busy. They're changing their lives. Finished? Huh? Finished. Ah. Oh. I swear you spend too much time on these damn boxes, bro. Like, who's even gonna see this shit? It's a bloody stockroom car. Listen, just give me a sec and I'll meet you out front. Alright. Oh, wait, is that another pair of crepes? You know me, cuz. <laughs> Gee, no offense, right? But why'd you even work here? Talking about the things, cuz. <laughs> and obviously, discount. Discount? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Why you ask? Nah, it's just. Look, I swear, you, you've been here for a minute, yeah? You've not been promoted. Oh, that's a bit deep, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> Two years. I <laughs> feel talk. <laughs> just here because Pops wanted me to get a job. He's always on man's case. Oh, sick. They got the new designer. Hey, do you want to roll through? Yeah, man, not bothered. <laughs> You're basic, cuz. How, oh, man? This ain't basic. <laughs> hey, man's got to school you. Nah. You've got to learn about real design, G. Nah, this is real design, nah, bro. That's, that's overpriced. Yeah. I'd be Come shit. On, shit. Wonderful, okay. Just make it happen. I trust your judgment. Oh, shit. That's Jonathan Ames. Cool. Never heard of him. No, the meeting. He's fucking some new pride, though. <laughs> and the old father tech guy. Bro, he's the editor at Designer. Don't worry. Do you think I should speak to him? For what? Well, I don't know. It's just like, introduce myself. I mean, you never know, right? Just wanted to pick up this book. It's, uh, well, you know that the. Uh, excuse me, it's Jonathan, right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Sorry, no, um. It seems that somebody just recognised me. I'll be back soon, OK? I'll see you later. I'm sorry, you were saying? I'm a huge fan of your work. Yeah, I've been a subscriber of Design Eye for years. I just uh, I wanted to introduce myself, really. And, um, well, I was wondering if you had any internships open at the moment, you know, um, at the magazine, or, you know, even in your digital department, because, you know, I know you're starting to do a lot more stuff online. We do have regular internships, but they're highly sought after. It's great to see we have such a diverse readership. Why should we take you on? Oh, um, because your digital department needs work. I mean, your print is great, and you know I love reading it. But your website screams we're a print magazine that just doesn't get digital. What would you change about what we're doing now? Uh, <laughs> well. Um, I'd probably start by building a strong social team. Yeah, people that understand that world. Then I'd use those platforms to test out ideas, you know, like for bigger editorials, while blooding some new talent. You know, if they work and they get a good response, you can build on that. And if they don't, well, it's not a big loss. Just approach it as if you was a tech company, you know, fail in iteration. Interesting perspective. Shoot me an email. It's on my website. I'll see what I can do.
Actually, take my card, shoot me an email directly. Yo, boss, boss, boss. Let me get a photo for the gram. You know how it is, innit? Yeah? Come, come, come. All right, cool. Yeah, safe for that, oh, bro. I'm going to shout you. All right. Oh, you're so bait, bruv. You didn't even know who the hell he was. Building the brand, fam. Building the brand. Well, wait. What's your profile pick on? Lion. Beast mode, bruv. In a bit, bro. Safe. Josh, come say hi. This is my eldest. Hi. And makes curtains. Maybe you should start a business with her, with your styling. Everyone's doing it now, you know. Kick it up. Give it a kick. Kickstarter, Mum. Uh, do you know what? I'm all right. But thank you. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Anne. Dad, uh, that's for you. So this is Indian food. Don't worry, not too spicy. <laughs> How was work? Yeah, um, it was good, you know, same old. But uh, I did have something quite interesting happen today. Josh works in a fashion store in Shoreditch. He's one of the best stylists. Oh, really? I don't like fashion. Too many puffs for me. So, Josh, you were saying? Um, well, I bumped into the editor of, like, one of the UK's top design magazines today. And, um, well, I think he really took to me. He was actually a little surprised that I recognised him at first. Um, basically, uh, <laughs> I think I got an internship. Great! <laughs> Congratulations, Josh. It's amazing. Well done. So what's the pay like? <laughs> um... Dad, it's an internship, so you don't get paid for it, but it's like, you know, one of the biggest magazines in Europe, you know. Do you know how many people would kill for that internship? So basically, they are going to get you to work for free, and you should be grateful. No over the moon for it then, huh? Is that correct? But Dad, like, hardly anyone gets looking at this place. So for him to actually give me an offer, you know, I'd like to think there was a real reason. I mean, you've always wanted a reason to be proud of us, right? So at least this is an opportunity to, you know, start something you can finally talk about. The first Indian fashion designer. Graphics. <laughs> Mum, it's graphics designer. Rani, this is delicious. So how do you know they want you for your talent? He said I'm better than some professionals. Well, then they can pay you as a professional. <laughs> I mean, these are rich luxury companies and they can't afford to pay a youngster the minimum wage. They can piss off. The church are setting up a blog. Why don't you help with that? I mean, if you're not being paid, at least do something which is worthwhile instead of making the rich 
people richer. But Dad, I have to take this. Okay, it's the only real way I can get into this industry. If it's not me, then it, it's someone else. Josh, I'm not saying you don't have talent and that you shouldn't go for this. If this editor offers you a job, fine. But until he does, I don't want you wasting your time. Failure is a scary thing, I get it, but the first step in getting over and past that fear is acceptance. We already had, have, and always will possess the ability to achieve whatever we want. Everything we need is within us. Curiosity about life and all its aspects is still the secret of great creative people. Sometimes you just have to let things flow. You can't force your will on others or force motivation. It needs to come from them first. He's uh, waiting in the meeting room. No problem. Tell him I'll be with him in two minutes. Okay. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. How's things? Well, I just had a really promising young lad decline an internship. I wouldn't worry about it. Perhaps it's time my son had a bit of a wake-up call. How about I get him in? And now... Welcome, Aaron Christian, to the BOF Voices studio here in Notting Hill. Um, thank you, first of all, for sharing your film with us. I remember when you sent the email to me, maybe about a year and a half ago. Yeah, about that, I think. And, um, you know, it just made me think a lot. And it made me think about you, actually, because as I mentioned in my intro, you know, we met very early on in your yeah. career when you were working for Mr. Porter and you were outside the shows. You know, what motivated you to create this film, it feels very personal. Yeah, yeah, I think w it was the first narrative short that I wanted to work on and I think you always start from a place, um, a personal place when you're doing kind of narrative pieces. For me, it was both, so that the film's written with personal experiences from myself within the industry, but also a lot of experiences that I heard and listened to from really close friends within the industry. So I think it was, um, an element of frustration that I felt as I was navigating the industry. And then there was also, I wouldn't say guilt, but because I was really lucky and privileged to be in the position that I was, how I got into the industry, and then seeing friends that I would say were like super talented that just didn't get those opportunities. So I felt there was a level of responsibility um, with all the kind of training and education that I got that I should actually give back um, to the community. And, and, and try to hopefully change how, how the fashion world is, is set up. And, and what was the message you were trying to get across? The, the ending is a bit, um, 
inconclusive. Yeah. But there's an implication in there that I wanted to go deeper on with you. Sure. So I guess nepotism is, is one of the big themes. But I think when I was writing the script and trying to write the characters, I wanted to write them in a way that there wasn't just one specific villain. Because it's, I think, the issues that we have in the, the industry, they're quite subtle and complex. It's, it's layered. So, um, so I kind of wanted to show that the editor, for example, he is driven by really actually wanting to give Josh uh, the opportunity and a chance, and he wants to kind of put talent forward. Um, and then you've got like the father that has his, his specific problems, and Josh is kind of the tension, struggling to, uh, to balance the family life and the career life. Um, and I think it's just coming from a place, because I saw a lot of different, I kind of navigated the industry, and. And I think it was frustrating because when I got in, everyone was so nice. So for me, it was just like, there's something that needs to change in the industry. And I didn't really know where to vent that frustration. Um, and essentially, I think it's the system. So I'm trying to kind of uh, point, you know, not point a finger, but highlight an issue that the system's a little bit broken and, and there needs to be a bit of change there. Yeah. You know, for me, the biggest takeaway is, or was, what if, okay. you know, those barriers to that kind of talent like Josh yeah. didn't exist? What is the industry missing out in terms of potential? Yeah. You know, and, you know, I think the thing, the, the part of the diversity and inclusion conversation that I think sometimes get, gets lost is that yeah. there's so much creativity is yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Creative yeah, yeah, yeah. people are in every community in every part of the world. And although not all families or cultures necessarily nurture that creativity, yeah. um, you can find it everywhere. And so if we don't create paths and open doors for people who may not necessarily come from a family background where it's encouraged, yeah. we as an industry are missing out on potential. hundred percent. And I think there's, there's a quote where it talks about creativity is abundant and talent is abundant, but opportunity isn't. And yeah, I totally agree. I'm always looking at solutions. So when I see there's a lack of diversity, I, I sometimes think, why wouldn't you want the biggest like talent pool that you can kind of pull from? Because innovation and everything happens at the edges. So you're just giving your chance or your business more opportunity to, to innovate. And that can only be a good thing, I think. Yeah. Well, Aaron, um Awesome film. Thank you. Awesome to see you in person. And yourself. Thank you for uh, being here. You don't get to see pleasure. that many people in person, two meters apart. Two meters. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a really powerful film, and um, I, I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you. All right.